Hi, it's Mike with Ugtastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2015, and I'm sitting here with Dimitri, who gave a talk about uh, the data grid, or bigger than the data grid, uh, beyond the data grid, beyond the data grid, uh, with Apache Ignite. Uh, well, first, I want to say thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me, and, and you can tell me a little bit about what your presentation was about, and and what is this Apache Ignite product? All right, thank you, Mike. Uh, so yeah, I want you to notice I'm wearing an Apache Ignite T-shirt first of all, so yeah. it's very cool. So whenever you see green T-shirts. I want you to know it's Apache Ignite. Uh, so I just gave a talk about Apache Ignite. So it's a, a Apache project uh, be currently undergoing incubation process at Apache, but it's I'm uh, getting a feeling it's going to graduate pretty soon, probably within a couple of months. And what it is, it's a, an in-memory data fabric. And uh, essentially, uh, you use Apache Ignite whenever you face with performance or scalability problems within your application. And uh, at that point, you decide to introduce an in memory architecture, you want to cache a lot of data, uh, you're going to be faced with uh, several, quite a few use cases, but a lot of them are common and mm -hmm. we see it uh, for every project that moves in memory. For example, you are going to have some clustering, you are going to have some scale out, uh, horizontal scalability mm -hmm. issues, you are going to probably want to uh, cache data in memory, maybe partition or shard data in memory, mm -hmm. and you probably want to transact on that data or maybe query that data, you may want to stream that data into the system or continuously ingest large amounts of data in the system, into the system and use streaming, uh, maybe computing using distributed MapReduce uh, or uh, uh, for joint type APIs. Mm -hmm. So all of those components are available within Apache Ignite uh, in memory data fabric. So from the uh, get-go, we, uh, we wanted Apache Ignite to become one point solution. Mm -hmm. uh, for most of the in-memory use cases, and that's why we cover most of these use cases. However, the project is still very simple to use. It comes as one zip file, very you just unzip it, off you go. It uses all the standard APIs, probably you're most familiar with in Java, like maps, queues, uh, sets, uh, like, uh, most of the concurrent uh, Java util concurrent APIs are also ported to Apache Ignite, thread pool, ex distributed executed service. All of those standard APIs are still used within Apache Ignite. So is Apache Ignite uh, a database competitor to uh, a NoSQL database, or is it a layer that sits between applications and, and persistent data stores? Uh, that's a good question, actually. So, uh, and the answer is uh, uh, it's probably not a, a simple yes or no answer. Right. Because uh, if you look at distributed cache within Apache Ignite, it is a key value store. Okay. So, from that standpoint, you can think about it from a NoSQL standpoint, uh, because you're working with basic uh, a Java objects, it's a key value store. Mm -hmm. However, Ignite has full SQL capabilities and it allows you to index those, index inside of those objects. For example, your class names become tables, your fields inside of the classes become columns. Oh, okay. And from uh, the, and then you can create indexes in memory and you can start querying it using standard SQL. So from one side, you can think about it as no SQL, but it does provide SQL a, full and SQL for no SQL. <laughs> SQL for no SQL, then, okay. there you go, that's yeah. a good way to put it. What does it provide? Like a, a way to write back to persistence, or, or is it always uh, only an in-memory? Actually, it does. Uh, it does provide. It does automatically write through to a persistent store. So if you have like a Oracle database or MySQL database already installed, uh, Ignite will automatically integrate with that data store. Automatically will detect all the indexes and put them in memory. Or if you can also integrate it, uh, put it on top of NoSQL disk-based databases like Mongo, React, Couchbase, or Cassandra for for that okay. matter, and it will also work on top of those as well. So it sounds like a, an extremely advanced uh, caching layer that that will provide some direct query capabilities that you can save a call to the actual persistent on-disk uh, databases. Um, that sounds about right for the data grid portion. Yeah. However, as I mentioned, Ignat is a fabric. Okay. So it, it data grid and ca distributed caching is just one component, mm -hmm. and uh, it probably is the biggest component within Ignite, and that's where most of the people actually will use. Mm -hmm. But there's also streaming of data, there's also sliding window support, there's also uh, distributed map reduce for joint kind of computations. So it provides a lot more than just that. But right. yeah, from a data grid standpoint, it's a fairly feature rich project. Okay. And, um, and I'm going to just move a little bit. Uh, the, uh, the, the project itself, I mean, how did you go about, is it something that you kind of cooked up uh, from projects you were working on or some thesis? Where did, where did the did idea for Ignite? To, to exist? Yeah. All right. So actually, I'm one of the co-founders of uh, Grid Game Systems. Okay. So uh, we started out probably 
seven or eight years ago, and that time we wanted, we had a dream of creating this easy to use grid computing system. Mm -hmm. And we started from compute grid, and probably three years down the road, we added data grid capabilities to it. And uh, grid gain actually always had an open source component, open source uh, version, and there, uh, and also there was an enterprise version. And in September of last year, we decided to donate uh, code to Apache Software okay. Foundation. So it became, uh, started going through incubation in Apache, and uh, we are, I'm hoping, approaching the okay. graduation within <laughs> Apache. As so well. what is the process? I mean, when you when you have an idea and you want to spin out an open source project, do you just did you go straight to Apache, or was it that you had in a project that you released and Apache contacted you and said, "Hey, let's pull this in"? How did that? How did so, you end up with Apache, though? So. Uh, well, I mean, there are two parts to the question. Uh, uh, we wanted to join Apache because we wanted to grow community around open source projects. Okay. So once you join Apache, you become part of this Apache process, what they call an Apache way, okay. which is very community friendly. It introduces all sorts of outside contributions. So right now, believe it or not, we have, it used to be only grid game committers. We probably have more outside contributors working on uh, Ignite than from inside uh, of grid game. So you get community growth. Okay. But however, Apache does not pull the code in. It will take your code, uh, it will take your project and make sure you grow community around it, make sure you work with uh, with it uh, via open source okay. way. But it will not take the code. You're still okay. managing you, that. So you're, so you're still <laughs> responsible for the, the, the project the architecture, development? The project yeah. development. But, but it's just that it, it's kind of sold through the Apache marketplace. <laughs> for no, it's, it's actually more of an Apache way. I mean, oh, okay. I, I get the, that's what it's called it's Apache way which is very open everything all the discussions happen in the open all the tickets happen on the open all the design discussions and future of the project is all in the open and everybody is equal it doesn't belong to one person okay. it belongs to the community now okay and when you describe you're in an incubation phase what, how do you go from incubation and what's the difference between incubation and being well not an incubation <laughs> <laughs> top level project you okay. graduate so the difference would be that uh, for, from a product standpoint uh, there's very little difference. From Apache standpoint, you have to first of all license compliance. Okay. You have to be. You have to only have certain uh, allowed licenses in your project. Like uh, definitely Apache 2.0 is allowed as a license. Mm -hmm. There's BSD license and MIT licenses are allowed. Then you have to have a well-oiled build procedure, well-oiled uh, uh, community process set up within Apache. Mm -hmm. So while uh, once you actually show that you can work within open source community and yeah. uh, uh, follow this kind of paths, uh, at that point you're ready to graduate. And okay. usually that happens when you do like two or three releases okay. under Apache. So we're currently on two. I think after third one we will uh, be ready to graduate. We're already complying uh -huh. and we're already uh, embracing the Apache way. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time thank to you. speak with me and for supporting open source. Thank you. Thanks.